everyone and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments and subs are always greatly appreciated. I have the R20 multi-track recorder and the R12 multi-track recorder in front of me. These are Zoom's two newer multi-track recorder products. Um, this one is very new. This one's been out for about a year now. But what you could see is, is that there's a clear size difference between the two of them. But there's also a functional size difference between the two. So once you get past the physical features there, you will also notice that the R20 allows you to record 16 tracks and the R12 only allows you to record up to eight tracks. The R20 has eight inputs and you can record eight tracks simultaneously or up to eight tracks simultaneously. Whereas the R12 only has inputs one and two. So you can only record two tracks simultaneously. This one can also be battery powered or you could run it off a USB uh, battery bank, whereas the R20 is really set up to be on a desk a little bit more because you have to have a stable uh, electrical supply that's always plugged into the wall. So this is gonna not be as, as portable. Once you get past those features though, what you can clearly see is that the screen sizes are different. Now, both of these screens are color touch screens and they give you a nice visual representation of what you're recording and what you're working on for your songs. They're touch screens, which allows you to perform some basic editing features in a really intuitive way compared to a lot of other multi-trackers that are out there that record that require you to lay down markers and try to trim up areas with, you know, marker A to marker B. This works a lot more intuitively it's a lot easier for somebody to kind of just start recording things and then editing their tracks by copying and pasting very simply you could split up your tracks you could time stretch you can trim up your tracks easily but what i wanted to focus on for this video are the size differences and the functional differences between the two screens for anybody who is comparing contrasting an r20 versus an r12 and they're thinking about what they want to potentially purchase i'll go over the differences in the both the screen size so you could see what that's like and then also the functionality they both run off of the same kind of software but there's some subtle nuances that you should be aware of if you are thinking about purchasing the r20 or the r12 and you don't know which way to go that's what i want to focus on for this video today both of these screens are lcd screens the r20 features a 4.3 inch screen that has 480 pixels by 272 pixels the R12 has a 2.4 inch screen that has 320 pixels by 240 pixels. What you can clearly see though, is that the ratios of the screen are a little bit different. The R20 features a wide screen format. This is a little bit closer to 16 by nine. And the uh, R12 is a little bit more square. This kind of looks like a standard definition TV as a, with a 4.3 ratio. I have loaded the exact same song between uh, on both the R20 and on the R12. And what's also readily apparent is that the R20 allows you to see up to five tracks at once, whereas the R12 is only going to display four tracks at once. The other thing that's different between the screens is while they're both touch screens, the R20 features a multi-touch screen and the R12 only has a single touch screen. There's really not much difference when it comes to controlling the R12 versus the R20 with uh, touch versus multi-touch. Almost all of the commands are simply using a single touch to select your tracks, to go through the menus and select different uh, features of the menus. There's no difference there. Where there is a difference is when you want to zoom in and out of your tracks. So the R20, since it has multi-touch, it features a pinch to zoom functionality and you could zoom into your tracks and zoom out of your tracks by pinching and zooming. And you could see that when you pinch in and zoom in, you can get more and more detail. For the R12, since it's only a single touch screen and only recognizes one point of touch at a time, you need to use the negative and plus signs up here at the top in order to zoom in and zoom out of the tracks of your song. So we can zoom out. You'll notice we don't get to see any more tracks, so it doesn't really zoom out vertically. It only zooms out horizontally. Or we can then zoom in. And you can now see you have more detail um, on your audio 
visual, you know, waveform type file so you could see where your tracks um, are positioned. Both cases, it's nice. I actually do like that the R12 has this very fine control that you could simply just touch it and zoom in and zoom out as much as you want. It is accurate and it's really easy to use. The problem with it is that you don't get full granular control. So whatever increments that the R12 software is set in for, that's what you can zoom in and zoom out to. Whereas with the R20, that pinch to zoom gives you more granular control over how much and how little you'd like to zoom in and zoom out. So that fine control is nice, but it is a little bit harder to operate on the R20. So if you selected one audio track on either the R20 or the R12 and you zoomed in maximally to that audio track and selected the trim feature that you'd like to clean up the track because maybe you have some dead space uh, before the music actually starts, this is what it would look like on the R12 and the R20. In both cases, you get a pretty good visual representation of your WAV file, and it's really not that difficult to trim up your audio file on either device. So you could see that this is a great feature to have um, and take advantage of the touchscreen that it's a little bit more difficult to pull this off when you're using another type of multi-tracker device. But in both cases, while it's smaller on the R12, in both cases you can still trim up your audio tracks fairly effectively. Between the R20 and the R12, there's a lot of differences when it comes to using the screen. They both offer the ability to be able to manipulate your tracks pretty easily. And like I said, intuitively, it's pretty easy to just sort of touch things on the screens and navigate the simple menus in order to copy and paste your tracks, in order to split up your tracks, in order to trim up your tracks, even time stretch your tracks. All of those features I think are pretty nice. And again, that's the huge advantage of going with an R20 or an R12 versus all the other multi-trackers that are out there on the market right now today. The differences in the screens obviously are 4.3 inches versus 2.4 inches. The size is different. This is a widescreen 16 by 9 format versus a 4.4 by 3 format. And you can see up to five tracks at a time on the R20, whereas you only can see uh, four tracks at a time on the R12. The R20 features multi-touch and the R12 only recognizes one touch at a time. So the only true functional difference is when you're trying to zoom in and zoom out on the R20 versus the R12. The R20 only offers pinch to zoom, which gives you finer, more granular control for whatever kind of zoom ratio that you want. Whereas on the R12, it has these nice buttons up at the top that are minus and plus that allows you to zoom in and zoom out in um, fine gradations but you don't get to control how fine those gradations are. They're just sort of set in place. It's easy to use, but you can get a little bit uh, to the more perfect zoom level that you'd like on the R20 versus the R12. However, in both cases, I find them to be perfectly functional and compared to some of my older multi-track recorders that I've used, it's still a lot easier to do any kind of editing on the R20 or the R12 versus all the other multi-trackers that I've used in the past, which namely includes the R8 over the past decade or so when you were comparing Zoom products to Zoom products. So that's all I wanted to cover today. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the comment section below, and I'll see you again next time. All right, thanks. Goodbye. <laughs>